Ruby is licensed and produced by Rooster Teeth and created by Monty Ohm. Please support the official release. Hello there, it's Jackie Wolf, more Ruby Volume 7 Chapter 12 with friends like these. You don't need enemies, is the unspoken part here. And yeah, last time, uh, everything kind of went to hell. <laughs> uh, this is no laughing matter whatsoever. So, pff, Salem showed up, sort of intimidated Ironwood to no end because well, let's be real for a second, Salem is all kinds of intimidating, especially if she shows up in person like that. And told him that, yep, basically Watts and Tyrion were just there to set the stage for her, which I still hope is not really the case. Like, either she's bluffing, because if it is a bluff, then it's hella working, or, you know, maybe the like flying monkey army is on her way, but I just, on, on their way. I just sincerely hope that Salem herself does not show. For multiple reasons, the main reason is if you're seriously telling me that she's the kind of villain who could at any point just stood up and done all this herself because, you know, immortal, all-powerful witch, mind you, then that's insulting, honestly. And kind of dumb, so I really hope she doesn't show up. And there's this serious reason why she didn't just show up at any previous point. Yeah, so much for nagging out of the way. But yeah, thus we have a rift between Ironwood and his Aesops because, you know, they are gonna be the loyal soldiers and our heroes. So to say, because, you know, they're the main characters. Because, you know, in regards to what is the right choice to make here, it's kind of a tough deal, honestly, to just say one side is right, obviously we're gonna side with the, you know, main characters and you gotta attempt to save as many people as you can and do the quote-unquote right thing. It's just, you know, it's so morally great either way because, yeah, you can save more people and it's obviously a thing you should strive to do, but if you're doing it at the cost of everyone, like everyone dying because you wanted to have 10 more people on a ship or something, that's... Not good. Anyway, I, I said this entire thing already at the end of the previous episode, so I don't want to go there again. And now we basically have a fight on our hands. I don't even really know what Ruby's group is going. It's hoping to accomplish there. Like, not only are they up against professional huntsmen, which they are kind of too, but anyway. But, like, suppose they defeat the Aesops, then what exactly? Can they, I mean, they have to take back Oscar too, who got, by the way, kidnapped, literally. And yeah, can you just, like, have Atlas not float away? Is that an option? Can, can they do that? I kind of thought Ironwood was in control here, but who knows? We shall see. My main concern right now is the fact that there's only two episodes left, and although this one has 18 minutes, minus 140 for the opening, uh, the next one, like, you know, season finales kind of tend to be longer, even if you subtract the, uh, like, four minutes with opening and credits. It's... It's not a lot of time, though, all things considered, and with Salem attacking herself, quote-unquote herself, like, you know, Grim Army and all that, it's... kind of afraid of a repeat of the previous volume where the ending just felt a bit rushed, you know? So far, amazing volume. Please stick the landing. Okay. Enough talk. Let's get into the episode. In three, two, one. Go. I was declaring martial law and abandoning Mantle. Salem is coming and he's going to use his staff to move Atlas. If we don't stop him, Mantle's going to be dis declaring martial law? We cannot. Well, that's a problem. Miss Hill, I'm sure the general understands the enormity of this. Does he know? Clover. <laughs> Aw, the poor shippers. You should know that I've been asked to bring you in. <laughs> yeah, obviously he's enjoying the heck out of this. <laughs> alert out for Team Ruby's arrest. What? Has James lost his mind? He's trying to stop anybody who might get in the way of this inhumane plan. Looks like he underestimated me. Again. Only Crow is under arrest. After everything we've been through tonight, please don't make me arrest you too. 
You can just, like, you know, spam the bow like that. That's neat. <laughs> like, seriously. Well, for once, she actually initiated the tag. <laughs> Aww. Yeah, the poor shippers! <laughs> Well, good luck for some bad luck fathers. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, just straight up jump out. Dang. That was a fast crash, wasn't it? Weiss, what did you do? The general is leaving Mantle to perish? He's saving Remnant. We can't let the relics fall to safety. Oh no, Winter! No! We don't have time to... That doesn't bother you? What about your sister? Our friends? My personal feelings don't matter. We have orders. I'm to retrieve the power of the Winter Maiden so we can access the relic. You're here to ensure my safety. Well, come on. We've already lost enough time. Again, morally, really, Doc Gray there, like, killing the Maiden. Matter. But... I get it. Generally. The General is making hard choices so we don't have to. For the good of all, not just a few. I do not see what is good about any of this. Oh my god, shit is hitting the fan way too much. On that we can agree. Think about what you're doing. You heard the general. Until this is sorted out, you're under arrest. That's neat. Please, don't make this difficult. Don't make us have to get out of here by force. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> We're not actually going to slug this out, are we? We're not doing anything. They decide what happens next. Well, that means yes. <laughs> We're the best huntsmen in Atlas. You were. <laughs> best, best line. <laughs> so there's your speed fight. Come on, Harriet. We're playing right into Salem's hands. You know we need to be working together. Oh, don't give me that crap. I had you kids pegged right from the start. Okay. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Plus, I'm taking the music. Well, that didn't do anything. If you come peacefully, we won't hurt you. Speak for yourself. They betrayed us. You're betraying the people you've sworn to protect. More like they have the better teamwork for now. Following orders now. Well, never mind. That was easy. <laughs> Dang! <laughs> I know you sneeze are used to getting what you want, but it's time to let this one go. I'm loving this fight so much, even though it's awful. And I'm not giving it up without a fight. Like seriously, could you have not done this on a ship? Robin needs help. Surrender, and we can take her to Atlas. Get her patched up. Never pegged you for the manipulative type, but I've learned a lot of things tonight. I enjoyed working with you, you know? Even with that endless cynicism of yours. Yeah, but the shippers! You think of the shippers. Right. We don't have to fight, friend. You don't know my friends. That's how it always So fighting it is. 
Yeah, just leave that guy unattended. Well, yeah, just breaking some thumbs there. That's... That's the way to go. Okay, just no, no, don't... Not breaking, but I guess, you know... I don't even know what the problem is called. Dislocate? Oh, don't stop on my account. Well, he wouldn't have. <laughs> so now it's just a free-for-all, is it? <laughs> oh, this is so great. <laughs> Quite a nimble dodger, though. Nope. I don't even know what to expect from this entire fight. Wow, you're teaming up? Really? <laughs> I'll say not that, in terms of expectations. Teamwork! There we go. <laughs> and the chase is on again. <laughs> Ooh. You're being quite pinballed a lot, aren't you? Time to wrap this up fine. They've had their chance. Don't be soft. Are you telling me? Or yourself? Aw. <laughs> Oh, god damn, that's nice. Okay. <laughs> so do those, uh, like, semblances still work if the aura is broken then? Or was it not broken? <laughs> oh, damn, that's brutal. Oh no, we didn't have to... The flickering effect of Blake. Oh, that song. But yeah, they took one out. Oh, damn. <laughs> oh, yeah, that. Apparently only works on one thing at a time. That's two down. <laughs> I love the speed tool so much. <laughs> well, lost your hold. Ah! That effect was gorgeous. Three. Oh damn, that's that's just harsh. Yeah, that's fair. We have to stop Ironwood. If you can't access the relics, you can't move Atlas. We just have to get to the Winter Maiden. Blake and I will look for the others. But our scrolls don't... Huh? Well, hi there! Where have you been all season? <laughs> this is the part where they ask us to help. <laughs> I mean, fair. Nope. But... Oh, damn. Just... So I don't get punched. This crazy girl showed up and attacked me, but she looked like someone else. Neapolitan. <laughs> Full name. <laughs> exactly her good things. I hope it will 
be painless for her. You said your personal feelings do not matter. Yeah, sure, rub it in. Actions. What I'm committed to. The power oh, that thing again. And the relic must be kept from our enemies. Even if it means she dies. But, yes, I mean, we must still acknowledge our personal feelings. Wrestle with them. It ensures us that we're on the right path. It's what makes us human. I think well, that was perhaps not the best advice to give. I think I understand. What was that? Of course you gotta have a red lit corridor. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> Just bail. Also not good, yeah? responsible for beacon for what happened to me yeah that too i guess was unfortunately temporary <laughs> well or there won't be anything left to salvage this time what do you think of that i think it gives me personal feelings <laughs> that's fair <laughs> So yeah, let's look at the more troublesome fight. <laughs> He's just pushing him back casually. Uh, Tyrion is enjoying this way too much. <laughs> Which is generally a bad thing to do. Well, damn. No. Oh. Okay, just ditch the sword. Well, dang. There goes the fifth one. Why couldn't you just do the right thing instead of the thing you were told? Sometimes the right decision is the hardest to make. I trust James with my life. I wanted to trust you. Nope. Well, that's a visual that I can't use for the thumbnail, unfortunately. Because I despise spoilers, but yeah, that just happened. Lucky charm, eh? Mm. Well, good job not dying on the spot, I guess. Does it look like your friend is gonna make it? How dare you! Oh, you mean. Like you just killed Clover. <laughs> oh, that's how you're gonna put it, eh? Here they come. Right on time. Oh yes. Ah! Of course. Ah! Oh, looks like our score will have to wait. You know my track record with the authorities. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm gonna be honest with you, in terms of someone dying, I was way more afraid of Crow. So... Someone had to take the fall. That's a mixed feeling of relief and sadness that I'm having here. I'll make sure of it. God damn... Okay, wow, that hurts. And I can't use any of these images. It sucks. Well... Been a while since someone died. Also, now that I think about blood. I don't think we've had, like, you know, blood in... ever. Like, sure, yeah, patches of red here and there, but, um, like, I'm just generally reminded of uh, the fall of Beacon when uh, Yang got her arm cut off in the chest. The first time I saw it, I bursted out laughing at the scene of just watching the fairy dust sprinkle out, so I appreciate it.
Oh yeah, that's not gonna happen. Kinda pushed that to the back of my mind there. But you know, if the Winter Maiden accidentally dies during this whole skimmerish, it could still go to winter. Even without the fancy transfer device. Okay, that was a lot. But everything I'd hoped for, somehow. <laughs> because my mom hoped there was that Crow wouldn't die in this whole fight, and that didn't happen because I seriously thought he was gonna die. Because, you know, with all the drama regarding the voice actor and his character and like when you when you look at the the, the opening scene that the last one you know where all of them stand and the group and epic picture and crow just stands offside uh, easily cropped out and all that so i really thought they were going to get rid of him but not yet apparently so in, the, in the, that regard how should i say this i I feel sorry for Crow <laughs> in general and all that. Like, goddamn, the guy can't catch a break. And so much, but in terms of emotional impact, I felt like it didn't really work too well on me for whatever reason. Like, they they did the really good setup for one. You know, the whole complimenting each other, good. Good luck, bad luck, and all that. And of course, we saw them basically being bodies a lot, which, you know, just spawns the ship was on even more because you knew from the get go there was gonna be shipping involved there. And oh boy, is there shipping. But yeah. So it's, it's not like I think this was handled poorly or anything. I can't point out a fault in this at all, somehow. Like, other than the fact that they decided to start this whole skimmish in the plane. Which was, in fact, actually, like, you know, there was more on Robin there. She's the one to get really heated and emotional. And Crow was just kind of forced into action at that point. He did want to wait it out. Also, I guess the pilots are dead, since, you know, nobody cared to even bother looking at them. And that's kind of the status we're at now, I guess. So the good guys are wanted, though the fighting was so amazing. <laughs> Although, you know, with Crow, quote unquote, having murdered Clover just now and Ruby having taken out the Aesops. Not gonna lie, I was kind of hoping that Ruby herself would do a bit more. Like we saw a little bit of those rose petal thingies that she's doing now, but if the whole your semblance isn't speed thing, and yeah, technically there's a bit more to it, but I was kind of hoping for the big moment there in her fight with Henrietta, of all people, you know. And seeing her taken out by an ice wall, effectively just running headfirst into it, is great on one hand, because, you know, it just, just works, it's teamwork, but on the other hand, I kind of wish Ruby had done more in that regard. Mm. Yeah, but in any case, awesome fighting, can't say anything about it. I feel like they've really sort of gotten back into their groove here since perhaps volume 6-ish somewhat. I mean, the, la the final fight there was still a bit of a mess. You had this prolonged fight with the giant mech and Adam. But this one... Well, there's gonna be still some people, but... I'm kind of looking forward to see what people are going to complain about with this one, because it looked awesome to me. They didn't cut away at all through the fight. I mean, okay, they did kind of, you know, to, to the other fight with Clover and Crow and all that, and I just think it was a great fight. <laughs> Perhaps, you know, the choreography, quote-unquote, back in the day with Monty and everything would have been better. Who knows? But... I wasn't disappointed, so there's that. <sighs> yeah, so anyway, uh, Team Ruby kind of on the wanted list, and having taken out the Aesops, they might sort of be on the run now. I mean, it kind of depends on sort of what authority Ironwood is going to have left by the end of this. 
if he even survives and how this is all gonna play out since like look at this we can wrap this up in one episode if it's a bit of a longer one if we completely ignore the whole Salem is coming thing we have Cinder versus Winter and Penny we have Neo versus Team Juniper and that's it actually kind of well Ruby versus Ironwood I suppose it's also a little bit of an upcoming thing but so long as the Winter Maiden isn't around, they can't even really do anything with the staff anyway. <sighs> yeah. We can handle these, these three fights in one episode for sure. And, you know, it's possible, just as a reminder, because we haven't done this in four volumes, to not end an arc by the end of the volume. Just as subtle reminder that Beacon Arc lasted three volumes and yeah we had our like mini arcs in between there but yeah who's to say that the Atlas arc has to end with volume seven if you're saying like I don't know volume eight Salem attacks and then I don't know whatever go to vacuum I guess since that's like the only place we haven't been at yet <sighs> plus you know there's the sort of destruction over there so that seems like a thing you might want to have against Salem. Just going by the name. Yeah, please, I'm just... That was such a great episode. Stick the landing. You've got one, two, go! You can do this! <sighs> but yeah, I'm sorry that uh, Clover didn't impact me as much as it probably should have. It's just somehow... Again, I was so afraid that Cruel was gonna die, so somehow with Clover dying, I figured they weren't gonna kill two people in the same, literally in the span of two minutes. So I kind of felt safe in that regard for him, again, for now, because uh, similarly, how Ruby could be on the run for treason, he could be on the run for murder now. But it was, you know, I have nothing to complain about with the whole Cruel theory and. Clovified. It was done so well and everybody did such a great job with the emotion behind it and everything and it just, I don't know, it, it missed me somehow and I'm sorry for that. <sighs> Whoops. Yeah. So, looking forward to the end times, whatever those are going to be, and until next time, see you then.